How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode and this will be episode number 50 of this series and before we do get into anything I want to thank you guys for all the support that you did leave on the last episode. We managed to get over 70 likes once again if we can do that for this episode that would be greatly appreciated but we are going to start things off by going into the office we have a few emails here that we do need to read. We have a player returning from, from injury. Ross Jenkins is coming back, but we have an injury. So unfortunately, to start off the episode, we do see there that Jacob Hansen has suffered an injury. He's going to be out for two months. So now we're down to just one left back in Ben Harrison and one right back in James Bree. No backup whatsoever. But now we do have a scout report from England. And we see there that we've got one good youth player here out of all the other players that we do have. All of these other ones aren't really that good. Max Campbell's probably the best, so I will sign him up. And as it is the first of the month, we will take a little look at the squad report, see the players that have grown for this month. Gabriel Miranda's now up to a 71 overall, plus three this season, only 17. The only issue with this guy is physically, he is just abysmal. He really is. Technically, though, this guy is fantastic. Harry Navio, who played very well in the last game of the last episode against Brentford, he ended up getting a goal and almost another one as well. He's up to a 71 now. We do have a contract accepted though from Callum Caddis, one of our youth players that we've had to promote. And for once we have a youth player with good physical stats, maybe that's a sign that I do need to keep more players in the academy until they ask to get promoted. He's 6 foot, medium high work rate, very, very average stats to be honest, but he's got good physicals. And if I train him, he's going to grow quite a lot, I reckon. I've also noticed this player here who's playing for Sheffield Wednesday currently. They're in the Premier League. I believe this is John Terry's regen, although I could be wrong. He's going to be a player that I keep an eye on for sure. I will even add him to my shortlist as well because he could be a player that we sign next season. But we do have a player conversation here and it is going to be from Ben Harrison saying that he wants to discuss wages. So he only wants two grand a week, which is absolutely fine. I do need to sign him up anyway because he only has a year remaining on his contract. And this will be the team we're going with for the first game of the episode. It's going to be a very important game here against Wolverhampton. And Wanderers. We do have quite a strong side going into this game. Not the strongest team, but hopefully it's still enough to get us a win. I mean, a lot of people will be wondering why I'm not simming this game. The reason I'm not simming this game is because Wolves are currently in eighth. They've got a really good chance to get into the promotion spots. And they're a strong team. And I feel like if we sim the game, we've got more chance of losing. Out wide here to Sims. He cuts inside. He passes it off to Edwards. And he ends up scoring in the 18th minute. That really isn't what I expected at the start of the game. I mean, we've conceded within 18 minutes. And it's a really poor goal to concede. They cut inside. Poor defending. And how they're able to score from there. It's just... It, it's not on. It really isn't. And the Bournemouth man tries to get it in again. And it's back to him. And surely he should have scored from there. His goal scoring pedigree in real life is so much better than that. And a free kick in a very good position here for us. And we can try and score from this maybe. Or we'll play it short instead, which I am going to do. And it's in here to Ayama. Who's going to go around his man and have a shot. And it's a really good save by Akimi in goal. Really poor touch by Harrison. Not the first time in the game that's happened. But he'll keep hold of it. He's done quite well to do so. He's going to play it again to Ayama. He's going to cut inside. He's going to keep on going and play it here to Navio, who's going to have a shot. And he does end up equalising in this game in the 77th minute. And this guy is slowly turning into more of a hero than a villain in this team. He's finally got himself a couple of goals and he's just boosted his confidence in the last episode. That goal right there. He would have missed that in a couple of episodes ago, even before that when we first signed him. We're going to play it inside. Ah, oh, Navio, not the best pass. He did end up getting the equaliser though, so I can't really complain about that. We end up getting what is a, it's a bit of an iffy result really. I would have liked to have got one in this game. But I think we're lucky to come away with a point. A contract offer declined from Ben Harrison and he wants a greater squad role at the club. I don't even know what I offered him, so I will just have to go and check. So I must have offered him sporadic first team player. He's probably more of an important first team player now. And there you have it. Contract offer accepted. So, you know, if a player is demanding a squad role and you don't feel like you can give it to him, don't give in because you're the manager at the end of the day. 
and I've just given him no squad roll. He's happy with that. We have a couple of players returning from injury as well, which is brilliant. Ben Chilwell is back. And Jake Rees is also back sooner than I expected, which is awesome. So Leeds United are the next team that we're going to be facing in the championship here. We're going to be playing away from home at Elland Road, I think it is. I think that's what it's called anyway. Either way, we're looking at where they are. They're currently in ninth. After Wolves ended up getting a draw, I would have thought that Leeds would have tried to push up for that promotion spot. But I don't think they're going to quite make it this season. Win it back. There we go. It's a good opportunity now. We're going to try and sweat it. And oh, you've got to be kidding me. Is that karma for sweating it? And we've won it there. Really good header again. We're going to win it back once more. And it's up here to Lockyer. It's going to go for a shot. And it's a really good shot and a really good long shot. And a great goal into the back of the net. I'll be honest, I didn't really think Lockyer had that in his Lockyer. Am I right? Am I right? No, shall I just leave? No, okay. The puns are real, but seriously, what a finish that is. That is a really good finish into the back of the net. And now Leeds United have a corner here, a good opportunity for them. And they end up scoring. Oh my god. What kind of defending is that? Like, seriously, as soon as the corner came in, I just had a horrible feeling that Sears was going to come out. I didn't want him to come out. I didn't tell him to come out. He almost came out of his six-yard box. I just don't understand why he would do that. Through here to Navio. He's going to cut inside. He's done well, actually. And is that a penalty? Yes, it is. What a silly, silly challenge that was from the Leeds United defender. And we've won ourselves a penalty. And this is a really good opportunity to take the lead again. Can we score it? Yes, we can. It's a really good penalty by Armstrong. Regardless of whether it's from open play or from the penalty spot, he's still got 19 goals this season. He's by far the top scorer. No one's catching him up. And Cook inside to Wood. And Wood's done quite well. He's going to get the cross in. And somehow they sneak that into the back of the net. This game is just getting crazier and crazier. I'm going to keep running here with Armstrong. And inside. And Armstrong's kept on going here. We're going to have a shot as well. It's a good effort, but it's straight at the keeper. I'll tell you what, Leeds United are one lucky team. How they managed to get a draw out of that game, I will never know. They don't deserve anything out of that game. And now once again, time for some more player training. Hopefully some more growth. Really want to see Ben Harrison up to a 70, and he does get up to that. And now we have arguably the biggest clash of the season, in the league at least. And it is going to be against West Brom. We are currently, well, we have a game in hand over West Brom. We're playing them here, and I think it's fair to say that if we want to win the title, we definitely need to get a win in this game. I think we ended up drawing against them last time in the league, so if we can get a win here and go a step further, that would be very, very good. And of course, we are going with our strongest lineup for this game, bar the players that aren't fit. We got Chilwell back into the lineup, though. He's got a plaster next to his name. But usually that doesn't really mean anything anyway. If we end up losing this game, I think it's fair to say the title is all but dead for us. But we can still try and win it here, possibly. And it's going to be Lockyer early on, cutting inside. He gets taken down. And it's going to be a penalty. And that was a really cynical challenge. And it is going to be Adam Armstrong stepping up for this one. Can he score it? Yes, he does. Ben Foster doesn't even move a muscle there. And that was Adam Armstrong's 20th goal in the league. That means that he has now, for the second consecutive season, he has actually scored 20 or more goals. Now it's going to be Adam Armstrong here. And we're going to try and get it over the top. It's a really good ball. And I think we're on side. We're going to have a shot. And again, Puccini ends up getting to it from the rebound. Really poor goalkeeping by Ben Foster. But we 2 him up against the league leaders within 35 minutes. That is just absolutely crazy. It is abysmal defending, yes. And they should have tracked back a little bit better, but they didn't. And we end up scoring the second goal of the game. Could that be the one that could take us back into the title race? And it's going to be a Yama cutting inside and having a shot. Almost Puccini got there. Very close to making it 3-0. And once again, we're going to get it to Armstrong and through again. And it's going to be Lockyer having a shot. And has that gone in? No, it hasn't. It's a good save by Foster. Now it's Lockyer forward once again to Ayama. He's going to cut inside. He's going to keep on going. And he's going to have a shot as well. And it's a really good strike. And a really good goal by Ayama into the back of the net. 3-0. Game over. No coming back from that for West Brom. What a finish this is as well. 
His trademark cutting inside. And then I think that's off the post, actually. A really good strike again. He's so good at finessing the ball. Now it's inside again. Gabriel Miranda. He's going to try and play it out wide. And it's going to be a Yama who ends up making it 4-0. 4-0. Four goals against the league leaders. And it's making West Brom look like they're in the relegation zone. Damn. I can't believe that. We've just won against the league leaders 4-0. How on earth has that just happened? I do not know. Considering we ended up drawing 2-2 against Leeds, we deserve to lose that game. But in this one, we were just absolutely fantastic. And he does indeed get to a 75, so that's going to be plus 7 this season for Sears. He's grown fantastically well. He's been a really good keeper as well. Now that it is the 1st of May, I do want to promote one of my youth players. We've got Mark McLeod here. But I'm just a little bit worried because he's got the May bump that he won't grow in his physical stats. He's got good physical stats already, don't get me wrong. But I've, I'm worried that if we promote him now, then he's not going to grow in his physicals whatsoever. And now for the next game here, we're going to be playing literally two days later against Nottingham Forest in the championship. We're in a very good position in the league at the moment. We're only one point behind West Brom. And we have a game in hand against them. So really, we've got the advantage over them in the title race, especially if we get a win here. Saying that we're going to get a win, though, against Nottingham Forest is easier said than done, really, because I know they've got a good team. Now it's going to be up here to Harrison. Played through for Zona Ali, who's on side. We're going to keep on going and maybe square it. And it's a really good pass inside. And that is the first sweaty goal that I've actually scored in this series, I think. Maybe not the first sweaty goal in this series. Maybe more like the first sweaty goal this season. But it is a good pass, a good bit of vision to find Devontae Cole by Zana Ali. And the finish into the roof of the net is a bit risky because he actually almost missed it. Tunga's going to try and get it over the top. It's a good ball. And Billy King's chested it down. Good little touch. Now what can we do here? We'll play it back to Ben Harrison. He's going to try and pass it inside. Now Zona Ali into Devontae Cole going for another short. And Devontae Cole makes it 2-0 within 28 minutes. Once again, it's that deadly combination of Zona Ali and also Devontae Cole. Both of them getting an, another goal and an assist for each other. I was thinking of selling Zona Ali, but now he's done so well in this game. I'm, I'm having second thoughts. But we go to ground there. Is that going to be a penalty? It is. 32 minutes in and we're 2-0 up and we could even be 3-0 up if we score this one. We're going to go top right and see if we can score it. Hopefully he does and he does score the penalty. It's going to be a first half hat-trick for Devontae Cole. Two hat-tricks in two starts for Devontae Cole means he's now on 10 goals in the championship which is crazy. He's barely played any games. Of course we've had Armstrong who's our lone striker up front. He hasn't really been having too much opportunity. Really poor pass by Lansbury. We've won it back with Zona Ali. We're going to get it forward again. What a nice pass that is. And we'll get it inside once more to Ayama. We're going to sweat this. Yeah, no need to do that, but I did it anyway. It's 4-0 and booze rain around the stadium once again. Oh, that's a really good pass through here to Devontae Cole once again. Can he get his fourth goal? Yes, he does. He makes it 5-0. 5-0 against Legendary. This is just crazy. 5-0 in this next game. I thought winning against West Brom 4-0 was a good, a good result. It was a fantastic result. But now that we've won 5-0, that's 9 goals in 2 games. I just can't believe this streak of form that I'm going through. I think the weirdest thing about this game is it was very, very even. We just scored every single one of our shots that we had on target. Devontae Cole got four goals and we didn't even have our strongest side going into this game. And that does mean that we are now going into the next episode, top of the league. We're on 89 points, we're two ahead of West Brom. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Four games remain in this season and they will decide whether we win the championship title or not. Either way, I think we've been promoted to the Premier League, so in a couple of episodes time... We may actually be in the Premier League. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.